Hello, Legacy Kids. We have made it through another week of physical distancing. Praise the Lord. You know, I really miss you guys. I'm glad you're safe, but I miss our time together doing praise and worship. I miss you guys telling me your one good thing that happened to you during the week. I miss us running around the classroom, putting scriptures all over the wall and everything. I just miss all those little things about being face to face with you all. But that's okay. We're going to be back together real soon, hopefully. And well, I'm just going to say we're going to be back together real soon, okay? So in order to make me feel better, a little better, what I want to do is take time to acknowledge some people. And since it's Mother's Day, that's why I'm all dressed up fancy today. It's Mother's Day, so we're going to take time to celebrate our mommies. So if your mom is at home right now, I want you to run and get her. And say, hey, mom, come to the TV. Legacy Kids has something for you. And we'll only take about three minutes of your time, and children, we'll get to our lesson at the end, okay? We're going to finish talking about helpers in the Bible. But this time, at this time, we're going to talk about our wonderful mommies in our life, okay? Stay tuned. a scripture in the Bible that says her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Whether you're an active duty mom, proudly serving our country, or a stay-at-home mom, managing your household and running your own business. Maybe you're a civil service employee, representing God's excellence in the workplace. Or maybe you're an educator, molding young minds. You are your child's first teacher. Whatever your role, beautiful mommy, you are appreciated. You are loved. Your children have so much to be proud of when they look at you. Just look at those smiling faces. That was very beautiful and it was all mushy and made us feel all good inside. But can we just stop and talk about how us mommies might really feel during this time? Mother's Day looks a lot different this year. <sighs> Mommy needs a quarantine. And our moms may be spending a lot of time with their kids right now. A lot. Like, so, so much time. And even though they love their kids to the moon and back, Mommy, where are you going? sometimes moms need a little alone time. Mommy! You know, to recharge. But no matter what's happening in the world, their favorite way to spend time is with their family. In good times, in hard times. Mom! Hi. You're breaking everything! In uncertain times. Thank you, Mom, for making time for us every single day. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I ask that you would watch over us as we go to bed and rest, that you'd speak to us in Bible stories and speak to us in... Uh... 
happy Mother's Day to all you wonderful mommies. I really hope you enjoyed that little presentation. It was a small gesture of our appreciation for you and all you do for your beautiful children. Thank you. So children, say goodbye to mom and we're gonna get started. We're gonna start with our Legacy Kids Anthem, but today you're gonna say it with me because I know you know it, okay? You don't have to repeat after me. We're gonna say it all together, all right? Three, two, one. I am the apple of God's eye. I am blessed and highly favored. I am more than a conqueror. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am God's masterpiece. I am the head and not the tail. I am important to God. I am loved by God. I am protected. I am strong and courageous. My name is Naomi Davis and I am a child of God. So we're gonna start out with our memory verse from last week. And I'm going to start it off and then I'm gonna give you a chance to tell it to your family and then I'll put it up on the screen to see if you got it correct, all right? So I'll give you a hint. It came from John chapter 13, verse 35, and it starts off by saying, your love for one another. Again, it starts off by saying, your love for one another. Now take a minute and tell it to your family. Very good. Now let's see if you're correct. If you got it correct, give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> if you didn't remember it, that's okay. You keep working on it, keep watching the videos and your parents can help you memorize the scripture, okay? So our memory verse today is coming from Proverbs chapter 19, verses 17. And it tells us, if you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. By he, we're talking about God, God will repay you. So again, if you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord and God will repay you. Now, this is so exciting to me. Bishop was just talking about this during Bible study on Wednesday. What happens when we're giving and just sowing into other people's lives, how God continues to bless us. And it's not always with money. He can bless us with good health. He can bless us with healthy relationships, godly relationships. He can bless us with peace. The point is, is that God will repay you. So you don't have to look for uh, rewards from other people. You just continue to help those in need and God will repay you. Our helper in the Bible today, who we are gonna discuss is Tabitha. And I know you see here, it says Tabitha slash Dorcas. And this is the same person, but Dorcas is her Greek name. And I'm just assuming that they put both of her names in here because she was widely known amongst the people for all of her good works. Okay, so our lesson uh, text is coming from Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. It starts off by saying, there was a disciple from Joppa, and it gives her name Tabitha, and she said she was a person who was kind and she did good for other people. But guess what? Right there in this um, same lesson text, it talks about how something very bad happened to Tabitha. The Bible says that she died. You know, she got sick and she died. So I don't know why. It just says she got sick and she died. And so what happened, the very people who she was helping, all the widows and poor people, you know, they started crying and they were just mourning her death. And the Bible says that they took her to the upper room to prepare her body. Well, when, uh, as everybody was mourning, someone got word that Peter was nearby. Now, mind you, Peter, you know, at this time, people had been saved. They were getting filled with Holy Spirit. So people and uh, Peter and the other disciples, they were out just healing folks, bringing people to Jesus. And so when people heard that Peter was around, they sent for him to see what he could do for Tabitha because the people loved her so much again from all the good things that she had done for them whether it was making clothes or feeding them 
what have you. The point is that she was a very kind and generous person to people. So of course, Peter agreed. And the Bible talks about how when he came into the room where Tabitha was, there were people there who were mourning and they were trying to show Peter all these different things that Tabitha had made for them. And Peter asked them, he asked everybody to leave the room. And as he, as they left the room, the Bible says that Peter, he knelt down and he prayed. I'm sure he just called out to God and he prayed in Jesus name. And guess what? He looked at Tabitha and he said, Tabitha, get up. He made, he just commanded her body in the name of Jesus. It doesn't say in the name of Jesus, but I'm sure when he commanded her, he said, Tabitha, get up in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Now that, that just was so exciting to me when I read that. And as she got up, the Bible says that Peter reached out his hand and she grabbed his hand and he took her. He took her down and presented her before all the people to see. And he says, she's alive. Just simple as that. It's only, you know, those few uh, verses right there. It just has so much power in uh, those verses. And when Peter presented her to the people and showed them that she was indeed alive after they knew that she was dead at first, guess what that did? That caused other people to come to Jesus. They saw this miracle happen right before their eyes. And it just blesses me because Tabitha, as we said in the memory verse, when you do good for other people, God will reward you. So her, her people, those widows and poor people, they didn't just accept that she was dead. They remembered all the great things that she'd done for them and they went and solicited help they went and got help they knew who could help them because peter again he was out healing folks in the name of jesus due to the power of holy spirit so children i hope this story about tabitha encouraged you i know it encouraged me i hope you learn how it's so important to be a helper for God. You know, when God needs something done in this earth, he's looking for you and me to get it done, right? It's important that you live a lifestyle of kindness, that you live a lifestyle of generosity, right? Because God will reward you. Now, I don't want you to just do things thinking you're going to get a reward from God. I just want it to be in your heart. I want it to be in your heart to help the poor, to not just hoard everything and save everything for yourself. But if God is blessing you, use those blessings to be a blessing to someone else. Again, sit down with your parents and watch the Bible study, even from Bishop, uh, from Wednesday. And you'll see all the things that he was talking about concerning when God gets things to us, how it's important for us to be able to use those things for other people, to be a blessing to other people. Why? Because it glorifies God. And ultimately, that's what we want to do. Glorify God in everything that we do. So I know you all are good helpers. And guess what? Today is Mother's Day. So you have another opportunity to help. Help mom do something. Do something different today. Allow mom to rest. And you guys help with the laundry. You help with the food. You just help out in any way you can to show her love to show your mom that she is appreciated on today, okay? So I love you guys. Tell your moms happy Mother's Day again, and I will see you again next week. Goodbye.